And our first speaker is Mr. Chris Matthew from Voxeo. Please join with me in making him feel very welcome here. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Full room, man. Now I feel like there's some pressure on. Um, so I, I'm going to walk you through some new technology and uh, a little bit of live coding, so uh, be kind. <laughs> Um, so my name is Chris Matthew. I'm the director of business development for Voxeo Labs. And um, I came to Voxeo about uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, through an acquisition. Um, I had a company called Teleku. It's a cloud communications platform that runs on Asterisk inside of uh, EC2. So I'm going to be using it in some of these demos um, just to show off how um, we have a web phone that inter integrates with uh, SIP, just a plain old SIP web phone in the browser. So when I came to uh, Voxeo, this was one of the first projects um, I was involved in as the product manager of a product called Phono. And Phono, we launched uh, a year ago, a year ago last week and in, at the Boston jQuery conference. And um, ha we've had a, a very large uh, demand for um, downloads and supports and, and a really active forum. But um, it's a really cool product. It's a JavaScript phone API. Um, and it's open source. So you can go to github.com slash phono and all the source codes in there um, for the client itself. What it basically lets you do is um, place and receive real SIP calls in the web browser um, using jQuery. So it handles events like when, when things ring, you get jQuery events that fire, you can move through the code and answer, say things, whatever you want to do. Um, it also has uh, XMPP messaging, which you know Asterix does as well. So there's a, a, some folks I was talking to in the audience earlier that, that are using Phono today with Asterisk, and it's a very complimentary product because it can do SIP and XMPP for free, basically with your Asterisk devices. Um, let me show you a little bit uh, what what a, what the jQuery looks like. So. If you look at the div.phone there, as soon as the page uh, becomes ready, on ready, you could basically say this.phone.dial and put in basically one of three addresses in there. You can put a real SIP address in there and call any endpoint in the world right from your web page. You can put a real phone number in there. And uh, Voxeo is giving away something like millions of 10-minute uh, phone calls as, you know, to demo our product to show you what it looks like. So, you can put a real North American phone number in there. We'll give you 10 minutes. We'll put a little advertisement on it and let you call uh, that number for free for 10 minutes. It ends after 10 minutes. Um, or you can connect this to any Tropo application, you know, our cloud communications API or the, any of the Voxeo technologies and actually put the app ID and, and through the browser connect directly to Voxeo's infrastructure uh, via Phono. Any questions so far on that? I kind of, I kind of, Jumped right in. I'm going, I'm going to get even more technical here in a minute. Yes, sir. So Phono has a yeah, yes, that's a good idea. So uh, the question was, um, with all the other uh, web phones, what advantages does Phono have? Um, I would say a couple of things. So maybe three things. So it's it's open source. It's free for SIP to SIP traffic. Um, another thing is that it has XMPP support built in, which is big. I mean, when you think about it, I'm going to show you a diagram here in a minute. It's actually running Jingle and XMPP wrapped in jQuery. So like the old days of like Ribbit, where you had to have like a flash, the old days of Ribbit, <laughs> where, you had, where it was all, a, you had to know Flex and Flash to, to build this thing. This is all jQuery, which is the number one JavaScript library um, arguably uh, in existence today. So very flexible for even web designers to add a click to call button on the website and extend it with CSS, HTML, JavaScript. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Isn't it blocked by firewalls? So the question is, is Phono blocked by firewalls? Um, we currently have two ports it runs on, um, port 80 um, for all the, the jQuery. Um, jQuery handles uh, signaling, all the signaling control, call control. Um, and then we have Flash as uh, a media, just, it handles just the media layer, and that is, it does require port 1935 for Flash, which is the, it's the standard RTP, yeah. And you'll see my, let me just show you the diagram, I think it's the next slide. 
So this is what, what Phono looks like under, under the, the hood. Um, the, the, as I mentioned earlier, like Google Voice, it uses, or the, the, the Google Talk phone, um, it uses Jingle. So um, Jingle's just basically an XMPP extension for handling uh, signaling. Um, so we've taken advantage of that as well. And Bake Chat, just regular XMPP-based chat inside of this as well, so you can actually carry on a full XMPP, like Jabber-like or Gtalk-like uh, chat conversation using jQuery. You don't have to worry about the strofe and the Bosch and all the, the technical stuff to get that working in your browser. We handle that for you in the Phono wrapper. Um, on the left there, you see the media plugins. So we have uh, Flash, as I was explaining earlier, as the current audio control, just, just, just transporting audio back and forth while, while the jQuery is handling all the events and signaling. Um, we have another version that we're going to be uh, releasing um, October, no, December um, 1st. That's a Java applet. And if, for, for people that prefer Java applet, we've managed to get the uh, latency even lower than what we have today on the Flash. And we're um, um, come the beginning of the year, we're going to have uh, secure RTP as well. So being able to encrypt um, the media stream with the Java. And then um, we just released, maybe a month and a half ago, um, an iOS, uh, Phono Mobile. Phono Mobile uh, runs on uh, iOS and Android, and you use PhoneGap to basically wrap those up. And once, once you have it, uh, just a regular web application wrapped up with uh, PhoneGap, you can actually deploy it to the App Store, and it gets approved. So we'll talk more about that if, you know, if you have questions more as we get into the Phono slides. That's pretty interesting how, what, what that can potentially open up for everybody. Um, there is one more component um, besides this. So we, we have a, um, since this is Jingle in the web browser, we have a, a, a Phono Gateway Server, a, a form, a Phono Gateway Server form um, in the Voxeo network on the edge of the network that's doing all the Jingle to SIP translations. So that's how we're getting you know, real-world SIP calls routed to um, the, the Phono client via Jingle. It's just doing uh, gyp to, gyp, Jingle to SIP translations all day long, back and vice and versa. So this software cannot work on its own. You need to have some kind of a gateway that translates Flash or Jingle into SIP. Yep, so the question is, uh, Will Phono work on its own without the gateway? The, the answer is no. It does require the, the Jingle to SIP um, uh, gateway. Um, we currently sell, this is the only, like, there's, there's two, two ways we make money on, on Phono. One is we can sell the Phono gateway servers for people that just want to control everything, white label it, you know, where you don't see Phono anywhere in the, in the URLs. Um, and we also make money is if you connect it to Tropo or Voxeo, then you pay just minutes for usage. You know, on our platform, doing voice conferencing, transfers, et cetera. Um, but Phono, Phono to Phono, Phono IM, Phono SIP to another SIP device, free. Okay. About video? Vi I have another slide. We have video coming. <laughs> That's all right. So video's coming. We've got a couple of other things coming as well. So some, some common uh, use case examples. What are people using this for? Click to call seems like the most popular at the moment. Um, with a couple of lines of JavaScript, and, you, and I'll show you a call me widget we have. You can just drop it on your web page, put a SIP address or a phone number. The, the consumer or whoever hits your site just clicks the button and it just dials. I'll show you an example of how that works. Yes, sir? Do you need to install the app first? No. So, well, so it, it's, it's defaulted to Flash. For, oh. The question, I'm going to get the hang of this, David. Um, the question was, uh, do they have to install an, an app first? Um, so Phono, it's all jQuery, JavaScript, um, and Flash today. So assuming they have Flash on their machine, it just works. It just loads and runs without downloading anything. Um, another interesting one that, that uh, we're starting to see a lot of movement on or is kind of the reverse side of that, that use case. So someone calls in on a telephone and they want to talk to an agent, say, in India, um, using Phono to route that call from an IVR via SIP to the agent's uh, desktop in a, a, a remote region over SIP and then integrate screen pop. Everything's in the browser, so there's no soft phone you know, to have to use either. Everything just pops right up in the browser. They're using the XMPP channel 
for all the, the, the data messaging between the, the systems. And then, then of course, the, the voice side for handling the phone call. And then gaming, we're seeing a lot of VoIP gaming conferencing and um, just you know, browser chat and, and acting as a gateway. So being able to take like um, a, a web browser, kind of like, um, what was the, what's the uh, IM uh, service like Mimo, Mevo, Mevo, uh, the IM web? Mevo. Yeah, so, so being able to do stuff like that where you've got just a tr pure j j uh, jQuery browser experience and you're using Phono and, and Tropo and other technologies as a gateway for SMS, for IM, for you know, what, whatever other uh, messaging technologies. Uh, say that again, what services are required on the machine? Oh, resources. So um, the, the machine just has to have flash. And, and you're talking overhead, like CPU, memory, yeah, it's very light. I think, uh, last I checked, Tim, help me out here. <laughs> we have an engineer in the audience. Um, I was thinking the footprint of uh, Phono is about 50K. Am I way low memory size? So he, he was saying a half gigabyte machine, he's tested on older machines and it works fine, so try it out. It's, um, you'll see on the website I go to, it's phono.com, P-H-O-N-O.com. So this is Teleku. I said I would just not, not harp on this, but this was the, the cloud communications platform. It's free. That was how I came to Voxeo. This was acquired last year. Um, it runs on Asterisk, so that's what I'm going to be using in one of the demos. Um, and here's kind of what it, what it is. It, it basically is a web API on, on uh, the developer side to make it real easy to build applications. And then it's voice XML, traditional old school voice XML on the, on the, um, the host side so that it can attach to, to like Voxeo's network and other uh, carriers. Um, so it's a total open source stack. It uses uh, OpenVXI and voice glue to get the voice XML side of, uh, of Asterisk working. And it just has, it's a simple little phone ML programming language uh, with the API. Um, so this is what the sip.conf looks like. Um, it, it's, it's an API, it's a web API that, um, you know, no there's not because we have not decided to open source any of that yet, so. I'm sorry, oh the question was, is there an, an Amazon AMI package for Teleku? You can use teleku.com for SIP for free, so you just, just play with it all you want. Um, so here's what the, the SIP.conf looks like. So I mean, just your, your standard allow guess, you have to set up, you have to give it the external IP and in the, in the local net, and uh, NAT equals route, and then you can uh, start handling SIP in your asterisk box. You might have a lot more elaborate config. Mine, I had a contest to get this running, and I gave away an iPad. And a developer configured all this for me, so I was pretty excited. That was a cheap, cheap uh, consulting gig for me. Um, so this is what the um, extensions.conf looks like in Teleku. So basically, um, when a call comes in, it answers and um, it, it points the AGI to localhost, and then this is the URL of, of um, my first voice XML page, teleku.com slash voice glue. And, the, and it passes the extension to the app. What it looks like is this. So when you call, like for instance, this SIP address, which is a application ID 194 on, on uh, Teleku, it basically just fetches this voice XML document for the carrier um, to, to respond accordingly. So let me show you kind of what this sounds like. It's all free. Keep in mind, Teleku is an open source stack, so it uses flight as its TTS engine, which sounds like a robot. This call is sponsored by Teleku. Beware of ninjas, they are very sneaky. Hiya. <laughs> okay, so so far I haven't shown you Phono. So far what I'm doing is, is Blink. I don't know if you guys have heard of Blink or use Blink. I should be using TruePhone. <laughs> all right, so uh, all I did was call that SIP address from Blink into my Asterisk Teleku server and, and it just uh, plays that, that text-to-speech. So, if we come to phono.com, 
I'm going to show you uh, what that actually. I'm going to let's code. Let's let's write something. If we go to uh, the docs, phonocom docs there's a real basic little HTML page here that just all, all it's good enough to do is place a call, then we can add stuff to it. So if we come to here, hang on. Let me. Yeah, I, I should have explained that a little bit better. So Blink is um, a soft phone uh, that's just pure SIP. And it does have uh, XMPP like I am, um, or I, I, IRC type chat built into it. But it's, it's a free SIP soft phone. You can download it uh, at iCanBlink.com. OK, so what I did, can you see that code? So what I did, I just grabbed the, the source code off of the docs page. It's a real basic little sample app, probably what, 20, 39 lines of code. It's, it, all this is HTML and uh, jQuery. And um, so all it's doing is it's grabbing the jQuery library in, the, in line three there, and it's grabbing uh, phono.js, which is the jQuery signaling wrapper um, for phono. And then the rest of this stuff is um, basically a call button, a status div that we're gonna populate with, with the status of the call. Remember the on ready uh, where you can dial? We're gonna basically enable that, that uh, call once it's on ready. And um, when you click the button, we're basically going to dial that phone number. I think that's a Rick roll, so I'll spare you. <laughs> um, there's one other thing you need to do. Can you make what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the the beautiful thing about this is your this is just a web page. So your your app can control what what numbers you want to put in there. We have a, a big healthcare company that's, that's got it in their web portal. So like when a doctor wants to call their customer service line, they, they fill in like whatever, whatever page, the doctor information. I'm going to show you in the end of the slide. We have, uh, you can pass SIP headers uh, through Phono as well. So you can put like doctor's name, the site they came in from, or an e-commerce product you're, someone's looking at on the page. Hang on, I need this. So when you sign up for Phono.com, it, it's free, you get an API key right there. You have to copy that into right here, API key. You put that in there. And um, I'm gonna change this to, um, let's change it to that, that same address, sip.194 at sip.telecoo.com. Actually, that should be it. So if we save that and open up a new page, we, you have to run this as local host, so you can't run this off a of file system because it has to be serving the flash from local host. So Christophe.local, that's me. Um, and here's astrakhan.html. This is what we just created. So as soon as it went on ready, I don't know if you saw that, it happened kind of fast. That button changed from loading to call. That's the, 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 th the script in there. So when I click call, it should call the Ninja app on Teleku. This call is sponsored by Teleku. Beware of ninjas. They are very sneaky. Hiya. I mean, that could have been... <laughs> I haven't really started coding yet, but thank you. I'll take that. Thank you. Um, so, so this little hang-up thing right here, You'll see what we have throughout here, and these are good tricks for you as you're putting this, as you're integrating this into your website. Um, as it, it does things, or as it sees events, like um, we had it like uh, uh, when it saw the hang up, we had it say, put the word hang up in the status div, which was right here in line nine. So you can like do things on your site, like when it catches an event like a ring, you could do a screen pop, you could say, here's the, the Twitter details of the, the social cue that, you know, of someone calling in, you know, it's Robert Scoble, you know, you better get your best agent on the phone to answer. He's been on hold for three minutes. I mean, you, you can do all that in the browser before the agent clicks uh, OK to accept the call. So that, let's, let's do an inbound call. So that, that was just an outbound call. That was pretty simple that you just copy the, the, the code right here on, on phono.com. 
com slash docs, but if you scroll down a little bit, let me show you something here. Here. This dot session ID will tell you the SIP address that your um, phono is assigned when it loads. So watch this. Let's just add that to on ready. Let's add that to on ready. So as soon as it's on ready, we'll say what's my what's my SIP address. Let's let's refresh that page. So it's an alert. So it's going to do a pop up. Maybe. Did I mess up? All right, who's watching YouTube videos? Yeah, that looks right. Let me refresh it. Did I hear a cricket? Should I take my line of code out? I don't think I did. Well, are you are you able to surf? You guys? <gasps> there it is. Okay. So so that's the alert that line we just put in. That session that's this dot session ID tells you the SIP address. That's a real SIP address. If you open Blink right now, I don't have like an answer button like in my code yet, but my browser would just start ringing. I wouldn't be able to do anything about it, but um, I'll show you. And, and here's a little secret. That's really a, a JID. It's really a Jabber ID, an XMPP Jabber ID, but it looks like a SIP address. So we handle that on the, the gateway servers that are doing the translations. So you could actually uh, IM that, that message, that, that address, or uh, call it. So let, let, let's call it with um, Blink. So um, here, here's Blink. My browser's ringing. That that's the default uh, sound effect for uh, phono, but we've got a whole library. All right, stop. See, I don't have a I don't have a hang up button or an answer button. God bless you. So if you come down to uh, the docs page, look at all these these uh, these effects you can put in. Agent ninety four. I like that one. Agent 94, this is command base. Please answer your communicator. The future of the universe is depending on you. I repeat. <laughs> it keeps looping. You could drive yourself. Some of these are crazy, like the birds. I won't, I'll, I'll spare you. Um, okay, so let, let me show you. Let, let's add, let's add that, that answer button uh, into here. So if we come back to the docs, there's a section in here that talks about incoming call, receiving calls. Okay, so we're just going to grab this little this little section after the on ready, and this is the events for on incoming call. So we're going to put that right here. So now what this is going to do, just as is, so now when, when an on incoming call event fires, when it hears that, dee -dee 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 -dee, um, it's going to just pop up an alert that just says incoming call. Um, that's kind of boring, but let, let, let's, keep, let's keep digging. Let me write another couple lines here. So I'm gonna add two more um, buttons at the top. I'm gonna call one answer, I'm gonna call one hang up. I'm gonna take off the disabling, so we don't have to worry about that. And for the values, I'm just gonna say answer and hang up. Now what we also need is some, some uh, jQuery actions, like, like this one, like this when the call.click is run, and you put those inside of, I don't want, let's get rid of this incoming call thing. So when answers clicked, we're going to, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do, See this variable here, call equals event.call? We're going to do call.answer, open paren, that. That's all you do to answer a call. And when we want to click hang up, it's hang up. I know, go figure.
maybe a semicolon. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, let's let's run it. Let's just see what we got. Yeah, so that's your page. That's that's what your that's the HTML that goes on your web page. What I just entered, that's like no CSS. This is like old school buttons, browser buttons, right? So let's see if this answer, if this loads. Um, so the way the, the the question was in real life, do you register with your own SIP uh, user and password? We don't have a registrar service with this. Yeah, so there's, there's no registration uh, with this, so it's not a registrar. We, it's something on our, on our roadmap. We, we've, we've had lots of discussions about adding registrar services. No registrar. So you've got to come up with your own. So you, um, the question is, how would you secure this? Um, what I've seen most most developers do is they're they're passing information in the SIP headers and they're validating um, based on SIP header uh, information. So and I'll show you in in a later slide how to do that, how to send like uh, key value pairs with the phono request to dial, and then how to receive them in asterisk. Yes, I mean, you'd have to figure out how, how you wanted to control. If you wanted like a unique one-time key maybe that, that you generate for every call, you'd have to have your own validation mechanism. Yeah, so right, so the question is there should be some type, type of uh, authentication and there, there currently isn't in, in Phono. Why isn't this loading? Did I make something? Let's, did I? I expect a token. Right here. Thank you. <laughs> Are you a heckler? Are you serious? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> 24 close per in. Well, there's that one. Oh, oh! I see what you're saying. This goes, this goes inside of here. Same with this. This comes out of here and in there. Take off the semicolon. Man, I sure. Let's try this again. Too many parentheses. Oh, 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 this. Uh -huh. Bear with me, you guys. I apologize. Call and answer. Open print. Is it this? It's this. One more curly? <laughs> Would two more curlies make it better? <laughs> there we go, no errors, okay. You need some summer <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what do you call it? Let's call it. Hold your, hold your clap, hold on, hold on, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna copy this zip address. And I'm going to put it in blink. And it should call. We should hear the do 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 do. And then if we answer, it should grab it. And then our hang up should work also now. We're ringing. Oh, and I hear blink ringing too. It's happy. Hit answer. Hello? Hello? 
know, I think I have... Where's my mic? Is this... I wonder if my air thinks that this speaker is a mic. What's that? Hello? Hear it? It, it, it think, let me hang up. Let's see if the hang up works. So what, what was happening? Now you can applause. Thank you. So what was happening, my MacBook Air, you, all your MacBooks, you know, if you have the, the thing that's plugged in, it thinks it's a mic and a speaker, and it's only a speaker, didn't have a mic, I think. All right, so, so that, that's, that's our demo. I want to show you, so you don't have to go through what I just went through, trial and error. There are some pretty cool um, uh, demos that we've already got canned for you. So if you go to the call me, you go to the demos, phono.com slash demos, click on the call me um, plugin, try this. This is pretty cool. We had a lot of people asking, how do you put CSS around it? How do you make it pretty? I just want a quick code snippet to drop on my website to do a click to call. That's what we ended up here with this. We have um, all the code below each button. You just copy and paste that into your, your uh, page and then you change that number to dial to either a SIP address or a phone number, you know, or your Tropo app, and, and it just dials. And if you wanted it to be a different color, it's using uh, the jQuery uh, theme roller. So you can come down and check uh, red buttons, you can kind of match your website, brown buttons. And it's still loading. <laughs> this one is, is crisp proof. <laughs> I haven't touched this one. <laughs> so as soon as it loads, I was, was going to show you, one has a dial pad that, that extends. That's this one on this side, on the right, right side. And the one on the left side doesn't have a dial pad. So if, you're, if, you're, if you want that to allow them to do like touch tone inter interface into an IVR, you use the one with a dial pad, and I'll show you it slides out. And this uh, headset thing, this is kind of interesting. We default... What our experience was is that most consumers don't wear headsets. You know, they're used to Skype, whatever. They just hit the call button and expect things to work. So we, we've, we've, we're doing some echo suppression techniques where we're muting the mic really fast if we hear audio coming from the speakers. So it's a technique where we're doing a lot of millisecond-like uh, um, muting of the mic. Um, we do that by default if a uh, headset is set to false, which we default it that way. You can control, if, if you know your agents always have headsets, you can say headsets are true and not, not worry about that. Um, but we added a, a box like in this demo, so if you click the box, it basically goes full duplex without the, the, the little mute, millisecond mute trick. Um, oh look, this one's up. I don't know why the other one's loading. So this is the one with the dial pad. It's going to call 1-800-77-FILM. So there's our 10-minute ad, and then it connects. Hello, and welcome to Movie Bone. <laughs> I don't know what his menus are. I just wanted to mess it up. <laughs> All right, so we hang up on him. But that, that, that kind of shows you how that is. That's pretty cool. One more demo I want to show you on, on the, um, what's available here. It's, we call it the kitchen sink because we threw everything we could think of in it. <laughs> but the kitchen sink. So, supposed to say. Um, so what this one does, you can play with this. Um, when it loads, you can add as many phones as you want to the page. And you'll notice that every time one loads, they get a different SIP address. And you can have one phone call, SIP colon whatever of the top one, and then you'd have them ring each other. You can change the ringtones. You can play with headset uh, muting uh, or call muting. Um, and that's on the left side. On the right side, we have an experience. So, so let, me, let me show you. Like, like um, This is the same Tropo app that's a Yahoo weather app. You, you give it a, um, a, uh, your zip code. And then you can also IM it, and it returns the, the weather in that zip code. Welcome to the Tropo.com sample Yahoo Weather app. Please say this is code for a weather check. What's the zip code here? Conditions for Greenfield, code 1246. 
Fahrenheit. Mostly cloudy. Tag fall. Goodbye. So if we chat with this same application uh, using Tropo, we can say hello. This is an IM chat using Phono that goes to the IM bots running inside of Tropo.im. It should come back. Instead of doing the text-to-speech and asking me for my zip code, I can just go ahead and respond via IM as well. So it's multi-channel, uh, same API, one API, multiple channels. And it should come back instead of reading the whole 55 degrees or whatever that was, it'll come back and, and IM me back. The voice was quicker. That's weird. Mm. That's weird. Tell you what, we'll come back to it. Keep. Keep me honest. Remind me. I'm gonna I'm gonna dive back into the slides. This is the uh, slide on how to do the header. I've only got like maybe three slides left. I think um, this is how to set the um, how to receive the header in um, in asterisk. So um, whatever the header name x dot x dash header name, you can have as many of these headers as you want. That's how to receive it. And in Phono, this is how you send it. So it's right after the um, the dial where we're putting in, in the, 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 the SIP address the dial, you can just create a, an array of headers and put as many key value pairs as you want and you just have to make sure they match. And I think they have to have the X dash in front of them or else the, the, the SIP monsters get it. <laughs> um, so this was the Phono, um, phone gap we were talking about, pure awesomeness. You take, take uh, phone gap, basically any of these apps I just showed you like the uh, kitchen sink, you can basically take that as just a regular web application, drop it into Xcode with, um, uh, with PhoneGap, uh, PhoneGap project, and hit compile, and it basically creates uh, uh, an iOS or Android, whatever you're targeting, app that you can then deploy to the mobile app stores as a real native application with uh, Phono built into it. That's what's coming. So we talked about video just real briefly. We've got screen sharing in the works. I don't have ETAs on these, but I'm hoping they're all coming up for uh, next year. Um, and file transfers and uh, presence. Um, I think that's all I should promise for next year. <laughs> Probably get in big trouble. That's all I had. We could, we've got time for questions first before you give Chris the man brave enough to do a real demo. A good round of applause. Who, who failed terribly. Without your help, I, would have, I probably wouldn't have come through It's it, better so to have you. loved and lost than to never loved at all, Chris. You did very well. OK, so any questions for Chris before we wrap up this session? You, sir, go ahead, sir. So the video. He's asking, what about the video? Um, what, I have, what I understand is video is being wrapped into Prism, which is what, what uh, the Phono Gateway server and Tropo run on. It's a, I, it's a, a SIP Thanks. media server from Voxeo. Video is being built into there, and it will be extended uh, to Phono. And uh, my understanding is that on the viewer side, it will use HTML5 Canvas. So it's going to be a very nice experience for people watching the live video. So conferencing, we handle that through Tropo today. And I mean, if you wanted to handle that through Asterisk, you could do that as well. So just sip into Asterisk and let Asterisk handle the conferencing for you. So. Um, we should have video conferencing on, on with Tropo. I don't know how it's going to work with Asterisk quite yet. Any other questions? Okay. Hardware. Unfortunately, there is no microphone or, or, or cam. Yeah, the question was, uh, do we do any hardware uh, detection currently, uh, looking if they have a camera or, or a mic? And that's a big fail so far for us. Um, we're just assuming that every, most every consumer app that's been purchased in the last couple of years, maybe? I don't know. That, that's a good thing for us to, to pay attention to. We don't currently.
Did you guys hear what Tim said? Tim said that the Java applet version we have shipping um, later this year uh, has uh, at least detection that you have a mic, but it doesn't. Jack, not a microphone. Uh, right. Okay. Yes, sir. Chris, can you speak to Voxeo's decision to separate the RTMP from the XMPP, whereas I think almost all web-based soft phone presence solutions previously had sent it all over Flash? And why did you choose XMPP? Yeah, I would prefer to you. <laughs> yeah. So Tim Penton is uh, one of the senior engineers at Voxeo, just consumed with phono development at the moment. Yeah, so, so the, the question was why did we split the media and the signaling channels? Um, and the, it gives us the flexibility to run multiple backends, basically. Uh, and it means that the, in some of the backends, we can go straight into the RTP infrastructure of the rest of the, the network. So the, um, like the, the phone gap backend is talking RTP straight into the rest of the network, so we don't have to kind of gateway that to the same extent. And, and I think that's, that's also true for the Java applet. Um, Flash, you've just got to use what Flash gives you. But we wanted to keep that applet as thin, thin as possible and then layer everything else on top because it gives us more flexibility. In, in, in our uh, blog on Phono, there's also a, a, a line of code that you can suppress the Flash from even asking for permissions for the mic. So if you're just using um, XMPP IM, or, or whatever, you, you can actually say don't load the flash. We just want to handle it pure JavaScript. Okay, got time for another couple of questions here. We'll go for this one first. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, a very easy and quick one. Uh, support for wideband codecs. You got uh, wideband codecs? Yes, yeah, so, um, so the question, yes, yeah, so wideband codecs um, with the flash, uh, with the uh, Java applet, we've been playing with speaks um, 32 kilohertz. And, and 16 kilohertz um, G722, yep, G722, and speak. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, uh, two questions. First, who is using Phono now? In applications, in the real world, who is using it? Yeah, so um, I can name just a couple. Um, there's a lot that I don't have permission to name that are like Fortune, there's two Fortune 1000 companies I know of for sure. Um, one of them is uh, not not the Fortune 1000, but uh, one one that likes us to talk about them is uh, they're called Inbox. I N V O X. They have a if you look if you go to Inbox.com, on the left side of the page you'll see a call us little tab. When you click it, it pops open a, a three choices. You can call like a phone number, Skype, or Phono basically through the browser, and they have a pretty nice experience uh, getting getting you to uh, consumers. Healthcare. We have a very large entertainment uh, amusement park company using it. Okay. And the other question is: Are the roadmap actually to do the register the SIP registration stuff, or is not in the roadmap? This the what? The SIP registration. Oh, the so SIP registration. So it, it's something that's not been prioritized yet, but it is something we frequently discuss. We, we're in, in addition to that, we're looking at an overhaul of the the API key that we have in there. It's not real sophisticated how we're managing it, so it is on the roadmap, and, and I don't have an ETA, but I'm I'm more I'm pretty sure it'll it'll happen next year definitely, yeah. I'm pretty sure definitely. That's such a weird, weird uh, answer. Excuse me. Yes, uh, so you need Boxio gateway right now. I understand. Cur yeah. Currently, you do. So that's what sits on the edge of our networks. It does this jingle to SIP translation. Mm -hmm. um, you can. So there's, there's two things with regard to that. You can purchase it today and, and deploy it in your own, your own uh, network, your own mm -hmm. URLs, everything. We are also, uh, our CEO ha is asking us to open source it as well. Um, so and like everything we have that sits on top of Prism, it's open source. So that's, that's our strategy at this point is to open source the Phono Gateway server. And I'm told it will run on other uh, Java application servers as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we focus on our prism, our internal uh, technology. Uh, can you give, me, give us some technical details about it? I mean, it's written in, on Java or C, yeah, it's C, it's C Sharp or it's what? Java. So, it's Java. So, so the, the gateway, Tim, is that right? I think it's Java. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. <laughs> so, so the gateway, the, the Phono gateway prism is Java, and I'm pretty sure the Phono gateway server itself is a Java application on top of prism. Okay. 
How's that for? Do we have a question right at the back there? So you can't. The question was, can you transfer a call? We rely on asterisk or or tropo or Voxeo evolution to do that. So you basically could put a SIP call into our API platform, and then from there you could conference, transfer, PSTN. You could route a real phone number in. Yeah, we we currently don't support like SIP transfers in Phono, but. You should go, I like that idea. Maybe if you get a, a moment, go to phono.com and on our forum, ask us there. That we, we, we track what consumers are looking for, developers, and that, that, might, that might make it in. Great, okay, one more question now for Chris. That's time for just one more. Yes, sir, let's hand you the mic. I'm not very technical, so I'll have to ask this question. Nor am I, so. <laughs> <laughs> With regards to uh, the latest versions of HTML, I understand they're putting a SIP stack into the new browsers. Can you talk to how you're going to be taking advantage of that? So, so, my, the, yeah, so my understanding, so there, you reminded me of something I wanted to talk about. The only, reason we don't the only reason we use Flash and Java today is to get permission for the microphone. We have a guy, we have a guy who's on the... Um, the W3C work, working group for the HTML5 camera and mic permissions control. So as soon as they do approve that and that moves through to the browsers, we get to get rid of Flash and Java and just do all pure native Java, jQuery, you know, JavaScript uh, controls. Um, the question about the SIP in the browser, um, what we've been watching very closely is Google's uh, open source initiative around um, WebRTC. So they, they I don't know if the, if the company was Gips or Gips. They bought them for like 70 plus million dollars. And then when Skype was acquired by Microsoft, they open sourced it. There's some really cool uh, audio and video uh, technology in that stack. We've been uh, digging through that as well to see what, what can we leverage uh, in Phono from that. Because we believe that Chrome especially will be very, very soon that that will be supported in there. Um, and uh, Firefox to follow, Safari way later, and IE maybe never, you know. Great. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Now let's give him the round of applause. He